Hey everybody, this is Perch, and this video is probably aimed more at, uh, well, it could be at, at, at everybody, but maybe a little bit more for the people who, who get confused or frustrated when the fans get upset. Now, I mentioned things along this line before, but I, I think that empathy is a really, kind of, it's, it's one of those skills that, that isn't taught in school, is maybe one of the most important lessons you can you know, teach your kids if you have them, have empathy. And empathy means a lot of different things. But for this case, for comic books, what I'm talking about here is be understanding of why people are acting the way they are. Because in almost all cases, and I'm saying like 99.9% .9 of cases, people are acting the way they're acting for a reason. It's not just outright insanity. If you ever meet somebody who's acting in a way that has no meaning, there's no background to it, it's complete irrational, That's those are the people you back away from quickly. This is, most people are acting away for a reason. And I noticed that that the vast majority of fights in comics and, and discontent and anger, and, and what's interesting is we hear a lot, if you're a fan of comics or a customer of comics, you probably have been in groups or on social media or in the comments or wherever else, you see people who are frustrated with other creators. Like these creators are, are rude to us or they, they block us, whatever else, and there's frustration there. Well, here's the thing that you may not see, and it's uh, no pun intended. Uh, it, if you are in a Facebook group or you're in a creator group or you're in a place where a lot of the creators hang out, there's at times an equal amount of frustration complaining about the customers. Why are the customers behaving this? I think you'd be shocked. You know those articles that talk about Whisper Networks and all that kind of stuff, the kind of the exposés? The one I keep waiting for, but it never drops, are screen grabs of, of Facebook groups or, uh, or Google uh, Docs or other places where people communicate where the, the writers, the creators, the people in comics are as frustrated, as pissed, as vocal, and irritated as the, at the customers, as the customers are with the creators. Now, I, you know, I always, it, in many cases, there's a lot you could say about that, and I am surprised more of those screenshots haven't made their way out, and uh, in many cases, and I'm not going to be the one to bring it, and for a very simple reason, in most cases, it's people venting, or it's people who are misled or confused about something, and it goes back to empathy. Um, I've, I've made this point several times, so much so that, uh, and, and by the way, every time I make this point to a creator, maybe I'm just lucky in the people I've talked to, they all get it. You know, uh, Sean Gordon Murphy gets it. Jeff Thorne gets it. Um, I can go down the list of a lot of other names. Scott Snyder gets it. Lots of people get this part, is that when you do something disruptive to a character, when you change it, when you when you alter the status quo, you know, and, and comic publishers are fond of this. And it, it's, in many cases, the pitch that a lot of people give. It's like, this is going to change what you knew about you know, this character forever. Well, on one hand, that's tantalizing. But on the other hand, it, it often means you're going to upset people. And when I've pointed this out to creators, like, hey, you know, they're, they're complaining. Like, why are the fans so angry? They're going on hate campaigns on social media and everything else. And it's like, well, you changed something fundamental about the comic they were reading. And I will, I will definitely agree that there are, are customers, there are fans who, who take things too far. By the way, it's something I'm trying to change in my mind. Um, I, I say fans when customers is the better word. I, I think Sean Murphy pointed that out, and he's absolutely right. It's customers. These are people who are, in theory, buying something. It's either a customer or a potential customer. Either way, it's somebody who's going to take their, their cash, and they're going to spend it on you. And that is something to consider. It's more just a fan that somebody's putting some financial stake in the game. Customers is the right word. But at any rate, um, it, it is when you're changing something, you're altering something, you're disrupting something, you're going to get a reaction. The reaction can absolutely be irrational. And you, you see it all the time. You see some people like, like if somebody changes a character you love in a fundamental way, it may be hurtful, it may be annoying, it may be really make, make you really mad. And there's nothing wrong with those feelings. And I, I'm sick of, this is where empathy comes in. I'm sick of people telling you how you're not supposed to feel upset about something. It's like, I, and I hate all the reasons. Well, it's not your character. Okay, sure. That's true. That, but you've been paying into this property. You, you can't get upset. Of course you can get upset. 
Of course, the company can do whatever they want. It is their character. You're absolutely right. But are you expecting everybody to have just no emotions, to be drones, to, you know, take whatever you like? Hey, if it's positive, you're what you're you're allowed to love it. If it's negative, you just have to keep it. You cannot show any emotion. You got to go full Vulcan and just just be flat. Of course, that's an un, that's an unreasonable ask of anyone. People are going to be emotional. They're going to, you know, if you build up something somebody cares about. And, and writers know they do this, by the way. Writers, uh, in many cases in their pitch, it's like we're going to send our readers through an emotional roller coaster. Hey, when you're writing emotional roller coaster, what do you think the, the, the twists and turns on that roller coaster are? Do you think it's, it's well, they're going to go from happiness to super happiness to happy but melancholy to happy but a little, a little tearful to happy again? Like that, that's, not, that's not what an emotional roller coaster is. I'm happy, I'm furious, I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm happy again. That's that's what you do. And, and many writers write comics designed to pluck at those emotional cords. That that's you know, some might say that's what makes a strong story if you're able to do that successfully. But that means you're going to get a negative reaction, and you need to have some empathy to people for that. You need to have some empathy that. What you write may make people really mad, especially if you're doing a the world will never be the same again breaking status quo thing. I, I know I harp on this a bit, and, and harp is a wrong word because I probably say it too often, but I, it really, really bugged me um, in the Iceman example when they revealed that Iceman was gay, and then the interviews uh, for people, and, and to, to the fair, I, I, I you know, Bendis didn't say this, but several of the editors did, which was, we, we were totally surprised why there was a negative reaction. And I, I just, I, I hate that, I hate that response, because it's not true. It's, it's completely false. And as long as, if, if we're just going to deal in, you know, fantasy land, and we're just going to kind of pretend that obvious things aren't obvious, then we're not getting anywhere. And one of the things that has to happen in comics is creators need to connect with their customers. In many cases, way more than customers need to connect with the creators. I mean, you know, here's the the sad truth of the matter. And it's, I don't say that with, with happiness or glee, it's just, it's just true, is that creators do need customers to continue their careers. Yes, it's true that a publisher may love a certain creator, and even if the creator doesn't sell particularly well, they may continue to employ them for a variety of reasons, but never for long. These places are businesses, and this is one of the big fallacies, I think, that comes up a lot on a lot of YouTube channels, is they, they pretend like these companies are, you know, are, are kind of socialist entities that do not need to make money. At the end of the day, they do need to make money, and it may take a while, and it may take way longer than you think. And the money may not be made in the way that you like it, but at the end of the day, if somebody is actually costing the company money, they go. I, I have no direct proof that this is the case, but it is suspicious that if you look, like when I did the analysis of Civil War II, and you look at what happened in the 12 months that followed, the sales tanked across the board. It was in bad shape. They had tried a lot of new series. Remember, they were putting out a full killer book and a solo book, and like all the Deadpool mercs had their own book. And it was just, there were all these new titles, and they, they bombed. They didn't sell well. And Axel Alonso lost his job. And on, at the time, when he lost his job, people were making the comment of, oh, Marvel's listening to us, and we don't like the social justice topics in comics. I don't think so. And I think, we can, I think most people can admit at this point that that was not the case at all. That's not why any decision was made. What was the decision was big-name talent left, i.e. Bendis, and sales were down. And when you're holding that job, it's going to catch up with you one, one, you know, eventually. Again, it may take a while, but it gets there. So at the end of the day, creators do need customers. They need customers in order to put up numbers to, to sell books. By contrast, the customers don't really need the creators. I mean, they need something to consume. But the customers have a lot more options. They can switch to other medium. They, there's, you know, the, the publishers have done it to themselves. They're, they're producing hundreds of comics a month. I mean, you know, that, that's, they can do pretty much what they need to do. Uh, customers are, are not beholden to comics 
from anything other than they want a good story to read. They want to be entertained, and maybe they have a history built up. And, and Disney well knows that if you get somebody who emotionally connects themselves to your brand, you know, they'll spend tons of money as long as you can keep that connection alive. But the second you start messing around with that connection, the second you start saying things like, well, we don't need you, uh, you know, people do leave. They, they take you up on that offer. They go. It, it's funny. I, I suspect, and, and I've always believed this, and I think there's some proof to it, is the people who are the noisiest, the, the really loud complainers on YouTube or social media or wherever it happens to be about a comic, those people are not really your problem. You might think so. They're loud. They're making a lot of noise, sometimes fairly, sometimes unfairly, about your comic. But that's not really your problem because those people are still remaining invested. They may be invested in a negative way, but a lot of cases they're still buying comics if for no other reason than to hate them. But they're, they're, still, they're still following your company. The real danger, the real worry that you always have is any, for any company producing any kind of product is the people who silently leave. Those are the people who just don't come back. They don't tell you why. They don't complain. They don't go on social media. They don't make videos about it. They just stop buying. They, they tap out. They don't invest. They go do something else. Those people, that group is the threat because that group is very hard. Once you've lost them, you don't even know how to reconnect with them anymore. You've got to spend a lot of money going to get that audience back. And in many cases, if they left disgruntled, they won't come back. People are, are weird about that. If, if, you, if, they, if somebody perceives that, that you wronged them in some way, even if you, 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 know, you pull your act together, I mean, look no further than the videos I've done on what would get you to come back. There's, there's people in those comments, and I believe them, that say nothing, never. Even if they gave me exactly what I wanted in the comic, I was wronged, I'm not coming back. Now, I'll say from a personal standpoint, my own standpoint, I, I don't agree with that. That's my personality. I, I give people a second, third, fifth, 18th chance. It's just who I am. I don't believe in, in writing things off. I don't believe in closing doors like that. But that's me. I'm, again, I'm not your problem. If you, to, the, to the big publishers, I'm not your problem. The problem are the people who do think that way and, and frankly don't say anything. They just shut the door and they move on. That's an audience you, you don't get back. And that's why empathy. Empathy for each other. And, and I've talked a lot. I've talked, this is unfortunately more one directional. It goes the other way too. Yes, I think more customers should have empathy about the situation the comic in. If the comic is not absolutely perfect, they don't have to trash every piece of it. If a creator goes on social media and loses their temper, you know, I, maybe something, you know, at least a question should be asked is, is, did something go on in their life? Is there something? I mean, I think there's a big difference between a creator who, who flames somebody on a message board in a moment of anger and frustration versus a creator who does that every single day, seems to take a lot of happiness in it, and then brags about, you know, blocking and isolating their audience. Those are two different people. And in my opinion, it doesn't have to be yours. I think you give the first group many chances. I think you, as long as, as long as, uh, if somebody wrongs you out of frustration and they come back and they try and make it right, I'm always, I'm always there. Uh, I think that the person who takes joy in screwing over others, those are the people I don't want around, but that's just me. Anyway, empathy. It's, it's the holidays. It's time for empathy. That's what I think anyway. What, what about you? Um, I, like I said, I, I, it's an interesting dynamic. I, I think comics, comics is a symbiotic relationship, and I'm not just talking about Venom. Comics requires both sides to kind of need to get along. And when they don't, it always spells trouble, sooner or later. And I'd like to avoid that personally. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, like, subscribe, have yourself a great holiday. Thanks for listening.